Hey everybody, it's Charlie Craven back again with uh, one of my new flies for 2022. This is called the Boy Wonder Hopper. Uh, Boy Wonder is uh, obviously an offshoot of the Charlie Boy Hopper, um, but a little bigger, burlier version, uh, you know, dry dropper rig kind of thing, um, with a, a couple key additions. Uh, this one has got um, double legs, and these are uh, fly enhancer legs from Hairline. Um, and then it's also got a macrame yarn wing, which I've mentioned before on uh, other patterns like the Fat Angie. Um, this is the most buoyant material I've, I've used on any fly in my life, so I'm incorporating it into a lot more uh, flies these days. Um, this fly has been sort of in the works, um, gosh, for several several years now. Um, and I had you know, originally started just by adding a, a yarn underwing to a regular Charlie Boy, but uh, um, as it progressed, I, I, uh, I put another couple bells and whistles on there uh, that makes the fly a little easier to see. You can see it's got a sort of unique pink deer hair hotspot, makes the fly a little easier to see. Um, and as odd as that sounds for, uh, for a big fly like this, that, uh, that little pink spot uh, definitely makes the fly easier to find. Um, from the from the bottom view, you can see that's still pretty hoppery, um, you know, pretty pretty plain and hoppery looking from the bottom. But from the top, uh, this fly's got got a lot going on and uh, is just just incredibly buoyant. So, uh, what I'm going to do, let's pull this one out of the vise, and um, I'll just stick this hook in the vise for the moment. This is a TMCO 100 SPBL. Um, this is a size eight. Um, and uh, a regular TMCO 100 would be would be just fine. That's what it's tied on commercially. The uh, uh, 100 SP is not made in a size 8 anymore, so you can't get these anymore because I have most of them in my drawer right over here because um, I really like this hook. Um, but what I've what I'm going to start with is a, a piece of foam that is cut maybe just to the outside dimensions of the of the hook gap. Um, you can see if I hold that just right. Um, just to the outside dimensions of the hook gap and just like on a Charlie Boy hopper what I want to do is take this piece of foam and I'm going to pierce the hook through it um, a half inch or so inch from the end of the piece of foam and then I'll chuck it back up in my vise get them in there square and this is three millimeter foam uh, so this is a little bit thicker foam than what we've used on the on the Charlie Boy previously so uh, you know another built-in element of flotation and I'm going to use some Danville 3 out monocord. This is just tan or beige color. And I'm going to start this just up here behind the hook eye. Um, you'll see the, the tying process is very similar to the Charlie Boy, at least to start. Uh, and the, uh, the Boy Wonder name, just for those of you, everybody always asks me this, so for, for people asking. Um, you know, my, uh, my dad called me Charlie Boy when I was little, and I called my oldest son Charlie Boy when he was little. Um, but when... Uh, when I was little, my dad also called me Boy Wonder, and uh, this one's for my pops. Um, so, this is uh, the Boy Wonder Hopper, uh, just a little bit, a uh, little bit more wonderful than the Charlie Boy. Uh, we'll see. Um, so, what I've got here is a, just a scrap of foam, and this is about three by three millimeters. You can see that's not exactly that that dimension, but that's sort of what I'm shooting for here. And I'm going to tie this down just behind the hook eye, and I'm going to wrap back over it to the bend. And I want to get all the way back on the last straight portion of the hook. And that's going to become our gluing surface. So, um, you know, that doesn't have to be a matching color. And, and you can see, obviously, those dimensions don't have to be exactly the same there. Um, you know, something around 3 by 3 millimeters. Um, so I'm going to take my thread and run it back over that binder strip, as it were. And I'm going to pull the foam around underneath the hook so that it's lined up under the hook. Um, and what I want to do here is I want to make sure that this piece of foam is all the way up to the end of that binder strip. And you can see as I do that, that's going to elevate this back end. Um, so it sort of tilts up a bit. Um, and that's going to be key when you tie this fly. Um, same thing on a Charlie Boy. If you ha have this piece of foam laying down flat, um, you can see that encroaches on the hook gap dramatically. Um, and just by sliding it up a bit, that opens that hook gap up quite a bit. So then what I'll do is I'm going to poke a hole for the hook eye, and I just use the tips of my scissors, and I want to go from both sides, and I'll poke that hook eye through. So we've got the, the foam threaded on in two spots, and the thread is hanging back here at the bend. So now I'm going to take some super glue, um, and Zappa Gap works fine. This is uh, just liquid super glue here in a bottle that I have much better luck trying to 
keep the, the lid on and off. And what I want to do is I want to coat that binder strip down each side, up off this extended body part, and then also up here beyond the hook eye a bit. Um, and I've gone pretty heavy on that, so I'm going to use just a little scrap of foam here to sort of smear this around and kind of pick up the extra so that I don't have too much. And then I'll take that piece of foam and throw it in the trash so it doesn't end up stuck to me. Now, one, one variation from the Charlie board that we're going to do on this fly here, still got a little extra glue here, is when I go to fold the head back, I'm going to buckle this a bit and pinch it down from the top all the way to the back, and then I'll lift the back end up. So we're kind of ending up with a U-shaped body here. Um, and really all I'm, all I'm sweating uh, that the glue really stick to is this extended portion. Um, you can see your side is open, my side has got a little space in it. Um, not a big deal there. I just want to make sure that that's sealed up on the back end. But you can see the little extra bit of foam that we've stuck out here at the front. So now I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to take a half a turn around back here at the bend and I'll tighten that down and then finish another turn, a couple, three more turns there. That's going to create our first segment. So I'm going to work forward in, in one-fourth of a shank length increments um, as I go. I'm only going to make three segments, but I'm going to work in fourths. Um, and what, that, what that'll do is, is leave over one last segment left over for the head. Uh, so to, to work forward, I'm going to cross the thread across the top of the body about a fourth of the way and make a segment. Then I'll do it again. Then I'll do it one last time here at the head, about like so. Not the most even segments I've ever done, but we'll, we'll make that work. We'll call that good. Um, so now I'm going to trim off this back into this body. Um, and what I'll use here is a, a half of a double-edged razor blade. Um, one little tip I got from my nephew, Anthony, who's a barber. Um, when you have a brand new razor blade in the little envelope that they come in, um, I used to take these out and then break them in half in my fingers and you had to be real careful not to cut yourself. Uh, and then he told me that just leave them in the package and fold them. And then you don't run the risk of cutting yourself and you've got half the blade in there ready to go. So there's a little tip for you. But I'm going to take this double-edged blade and I'm going to lay it in right on top of the body, right flat across the top of the body, and I'll just start to push it into the foam. Um, so you can see the angle of that cut. Um, that's exactly where that cut's going to go. You can see right in line with that blade. It's the foam itself that's angled. It's not the, uh, not the, the blade. So I'm just going to push this through and slice that little piece of foam off. Um, incidentally, you saw me use that scrap of foam to smear the, the glue around. Um, I usually save this piece from the previous fly, and that's a handy little scrap piece that uh, you can kind of put to use there. While I've got this razor blade out, I'm going to knock the edges off the sides of this head. Uh, for the same, same reasons, I want to kind of narrow this down just a bit. So I'm just going to take a sliver off each, slot, each side of the head here with that nice sharp blade. Um, and a double-edged blade is important here. I see a lot of people trying to do this with a single-edged blade or even with your scissors, and it just you'll find out very quickly it doesn't work very well. Um, but you can see I just knocked those edges off so it's a little bit more square. And now on the back end of the fly, you can see this body is a little bit wider than the, the extended part is a little bit wider than the main body. Um, so I'm going to come in and taper that a bit. And with that, I can, do, I can use my scissors for that piece. Um, so a little bit longer, fatter, thicker body there. So now what I'll do is I'm going to cross my thread from this first segment back to the second, back to the third, and I'll just let it hang in this segment here for a moment. Um, this is where I'm going to tie in my first clump of yarn. And what I've got here is just uh, polypropylene macrame yarn. And this is a blend of colors. Um, and people always get hung up on what exact colors. Um, you know, you don't have to match exactly what I do. Um, you know, I'm not sure I could even match exactly what I did here. I sit down some days and uh, just start mixing this up. And, and the gist of it being... Um, what I've got here, and I'll try to show you a little example of how to do this, um, is I've got some, some yellow and some brown and some tan and some gray, I think is what's mixed in this, this clump here. And what I'll do is just brush those pieces out um, and then stack each color um, just on top of each other. And then I just start pulling it out and restacking it and pulling it out and restacking it. Um, and it takes takes a little while. Right? You know, does, it's a good thing to do on weekends during a football game. You just kind of sit there and mix this up. Um, and that's how I get that blended fiber. 
Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to take a little clump of this, and you don't want to get too overly aggressive with it, um, because we're going to double this over. But I'm going to take this clump, and my thread is hanging in that that first, or I'm sorry, second segment forward. I'm going to catch it with a couple turns right on top. And then I'll lift up both ends, and I'll cross my thread back to that last segment. Then I'll fold both ends back and catch it with a couple turns. Once I'm there, I'll just cross my thread again, just right on top, over into that next segment. Try not to hit your hook point every single time. And then I'll cross forward again, and one more time. Oh, actually, just to here. Uh, so I just want to leave it hanging in that second second segment. So this is where we'll tie the legs in. Um, this slide takes a little bit more planning. Um, the order of operations is important. Uh, but I'm going to take, these are uh, gold, amber, black, fly enhancer legs. And I'm going to take two strands. And what I'll do here, try to get these even. So I'll take these two strands, and I'm going to lay them in along the near side of the body here and catch them with a turn or two. Uh, so you can see what I've done there is just caught them in that in that segment. And then I'll cut those back ends off. And then I want to lay the other two along the far side and catch those with a couple turns. Then I'll cross forward to the head segment and catch them again on each side. That give you an idea of what we're doing there. So we've got these widespread X legs and double sets. Um, one thing I do like to do is try to square those up with the seam in the side of the foam on both sides. Um, and I'm not terribly worried about the exact length just yet. They're not, as long as they're not so long that they're in my way. Now I'm going to take another clump of that yarn. Kind of pull out any, any short ones. And I'll tie this in, in that same segment, in the same way that we did the first one. I'll lift that up, I'll cross my thread back to that second segment, and then lay both pieces back and bind it down again. So you can see how we're building, stacking that wing on top. Um, and we will eventually kind of brush this out a little bit. So now I'll cross my thread back on top again into that first segment. So I'm hanging in that first segment. And this is where we'll put our deer hair wing in. And I'm going to take a nice piece of, this is white tailed deer. Nice piece of white tail, and um, this is really just sort of for, for texture and color. Um, that macrame yarn is incredibly buoyant, but the hair does kind of clean up the tie down area and uh, adds a little bit, bit of variegation to the fly. So I'm going to take a small clump of, of this white tail deer, clean it out, and stack it up nice and neat. like so. And I'm going to measure this just about to the bend of the hook. Um, so from where my thread is hanging in that head segment, just about to the bend of the hook. And then I'll trim those butt ends off. And I like to, if I'm going to air, I'll air on the long side. And I'll lay this hair in. You can see those butt ends come almost to the front of the head. I'll put two turns on top, one right over the top of the other. And then I like to pinch this together and pull down on the thread, and that'll flare the hair in place. You can see that covers the tie down and adds a little bit of texture to the to the top of the wing. And then for our hot spot, I'm going to take a uh, pretty good sized patch of uh, fluorescent pink deer belly hair. Um, and of course, you can use whatever color you like. If you see a different color better, um, you know, yellow or chartreuse or, or orange, if you if you can find and see that better than pink, uh, by all means, use the use the other color. Um, but I, I can see pink pretty well, so I'm going to use the pink. And the way I'm going to lay this in is I'm going to bring my thread up and I'm going to fold my hair around the thread. Now when I do this, I've got the butt ends, um, I've got them backwards actually, I want the tip ends facing forward. Um, what I ultimately will end up with is the butt ends facing forward, but what I want to do here is fold this around the thread and just sort of pinch that clump of hair a couple loose ones there. I'll just pull those out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up from the top and use my thread to pull it down right in the center on top of the fly. I'll take one more wrap in between the butts and you can see I can kind of work my thread back and forth as I do that. Um, 
I'm finding it's really handy to have the camera there because I can see the far side of the fly as well. And then again, I'm going to pinch. Um, this is just like if you were stacking hair on a, on a hair bug. I'm going to pinch this hair in place as I pull down on the thread to flare that hair all up on top of the hook, like so. And then I'll work a whip finish, and I just do a hand whip finish here, and work this thread through those butt ends of that hair. Try to get them between the butts and the tips. And I'll pull that knot down. Um, you can see I didn't have a whole lot of tension on that thread as I did that, but now I can cinch that knot closed. That'll flare the hair up a little bit. I'll come in and trim my thread out. And then I'm going to trim the wing. Um, you can just cut it off square. I like to sort of cut it off square to start with, just to be on the end of the body. And then I'll sort of flare it out a bit, spread it out for some surface area. And then I come in from the end and kind of cut at an angle to rag this up a little bit. I don't like it perfectly square, um, a little ragged. Um, it just seems a little more natural to me. So I'm going to cut some high and low spots. Just be careful you don't cut your legs as you go there. Like so, we'll call that good enough for the moment. And now to trim the head, um, I'm going to take the fly out of the vise to do this because I really am right-handed even though I tie left-handed. But I'll try to hold this up where you can see it. I'm going to sweep these legs back out of the way. And I'm going to pick up my double-edged razor blade. And very carefully, I'm going to just slide this from the front edge of the foam through that deer hair. And I want to cut all of the pink off and as little of the natural tips of the of the natural hair as I can get away with. Um, so you have to sort of just feather things back there. You can kind of use the edge of the blade to clean that up. Um, and if you've got a few stubborn ones that don't want to come out with the blade, you can always go back in after them with your scissors. I think I got most of those. You can see there's one long pink one still in there. And what I'll do is just come in with my scissor blades and pick that hair up. And then I'll use the, the blade to kind of clean up the edges of the head. Um, and what this hair does, um, by the time this is all done, is sort of makes a hybrid foam, foam and hair head. Um, so extra buoyancy built into the fly there as well. Put him back up in the vise. Get all those little bits off of him. So you can see we've got a nice clean little head there now. Um, and you can always come back in and uh, be nitpicky about every little hair. Um, I like to do that. That's just about right now. I don't, I don't like this one over here. We'll get rid of him. But we've got a nice little pink spot on top. Um, and again, as I say, that uh, that seems like an odd thing to do on a fly that's this big, but that little hot spot, um, you know, oftentimes the fly is sort of the same color as the water, reflecting the bank, um, and it's uh, uh, the fly, the tan color or light colored fly doesn't stick out as well as you might expect. Um, so that little hot spot just makes the fly easier to find. Now on these back legs, I'm going to trim them just a bit longer than the end of the body, just a bit. Um, these front legs are about half that length. I'll try to get them all to about the same length. <laughs> And then one final little piece that I always do on hoppers is I'm going to add some eyes. Um, and what I'm using here is a Copic uh, marker in black, and it's this watercolor tip. You can see I just press the, the tip of the marker into the side of the foam, and that makes a perfectly hopper-shaped eye. And I'll do that on both sides. And then I'll come in with just a little shot of head cement across that thread band where we tied everything down. Um, I like to creep up both sides. And that is our finished Boy Wonder Hopper. Um, pretty cool little fly. I've, I'm pretty happy with this. I fished this quite a bit over the last few years. Um, great dry dropper fly. Fish eat it really well. Um, lots of good surface area out of that macrame yarn wing. Uh, it's eliminated my need for a chubby altogether between this and the and the fat Angie, I've got everything covered. But uh, that is the boy wonder. Thanks for watching. Um, again, I'm Charlie Craven, and uh, it's always fun. Take care.